Recently we made chocolate chip meringue cookies and uh, if you haven't already checked that video out, the link's below. But I mentioned that we will use the leftover egg yolks making something called after meringue cookies. This recipe comes to us from the best of bridge crew and it comes from my cookbook called Winners and here's the recipe after meringue cookies and you can see I've marked it up with all my changes and rearranged it so we're weighing all our ingredients and we're following a slightly different order just my usual favorite way to do things as always let's grab our ingredients we need some butter we need brown sugar we need white sugar we need vanilla so we have our leftover four egg yolks. It calls for five, so I've got another egg. We need flour, baking soda. We need baking powder. We need salt. We need cinnamon. And now we have our mix-ins. I'm gonna follow close to the recipe. We need some raisins, some dates, and walnuts, but I don't have walnuts, so I'm gonna use some pecans. So I have these in the freezer and I'm going to toast them up and chop them. So the tools that we'll need, we'll need our usual wet bowl and dry bowl. Here we go. We need to mix it. You can use a stand mixer, but I'm going to use my electric mixer. There's not long mixing in it, so the hand mixer is a little bit more portable um, and will do the job just fine for us. I have a bowl for separating out my other egg yolk. I've got my half teaspoon for measuring all the small measurements and I'll need a whisk and a spoon. So now that we know we have all our ingredients and all our tools, we can get on with making this recipe. We need to get our oven to 350 degrees. I'm going to bake on two cookie sheets so I move my racks to the top and bottom thirds of the oven. If you just have one, you can just rotate it and put your rack in the middle. Our cookie sheets um, need to be greased, so I'm just gonna spray them with some cooking spray. We are gonna have to chop up the dates and the pecans, so I'm gonna make up a little bit of room for that. Also, my dates have pits in them. You probably aren't gonna buy that type of dates, but that's what I have, so you won't have to do this. I'll speed this up and we'll get through it really quickly. Oh, and we need a half cup measuring. My pecans were in the freezer because I keep them there to keep them fresh, so I'm gonna just give them a quick toast in a pan. Obviously, you don't have to do this if you have room temperature nuts. If you're going from frozen, like I am, a medium heat on the stove for just a couple minutes should get them going. If you can smell them, they're toasted. I don't even need to use my knife. In fact, my knife might be a problem because it will just stick to the knife. Dates are very sticky. There we go. So we'll put that aside with the raisins because they're the mix-ins. And here's my husband's hack on how to chop nuts without chopping them with a board and a knife. Because if you've done that, the nuts start going all over the place. So what he does is he puts them between paper towels and just uses this sort of uh, meat pounder, but you could use um, a rolling pin or something else heavy, a pot. And if you just hit them, I think I did just lose one out the back. But what it does is it will break them up into nice, great size bits. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold these until we're ready for them. Okay, now let's get to the next steps. What we wanna do is different from the recipe, we're always gonna do our dry first. So we have our dry bowl, we need our scale. We need 213 grams of all-purpose flour. There we go. A quarter teaspoon of salt. I'll just use my half teaspoon and I'll eyeball it. And I'll use my quarter teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of baking powder. So we'll just do two of these. And half 
half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And we'll just want to give this a quick whisk to mix all the ingredients together. And now we get our wet bowl and zero out our scale. We need 151 grams of butter. And now we need 99 grams each of white sugar and brown sugar. We can round it to 100, that's okay. And our half a teaspoon of vanilla. our scale and put it away and now we have our egg yolks so we have our four leftover egg yolks from our meringue so we'll pop those in there and we need one other so I will just separate it out Hello. and save the egg yolk for the win okay so the egg yolk goes in there the white, I'll just throw in the next time I do scrambled eggs, so I'll use it that way. And I will reuse my piece of plastic. Together. The recipe said to cream the butter and sugar first and then they add the other ingredients. But I found you don't have to do that and it's a little bit easier and one less step to do. So I've creamed it for about 30 seconds, just until everything's light and fluffy. That's all you need to do for cookies, at least these cookies. And now we'll just add our dry to our wet, and then we will stir it. Whoops. Try not to get flour all over ourselves. And you want to mix it until there is no flour showing. So it doesn't take very long to come together. And when it's getting close, that's when we'll add in our add-ins. We've got our half a cup of dates, half a cup of raisins, and our chopped nuts. And now we just give this one final good mix. Let's grab our cookie sheets. I also grabbed two teaspoons is how I'm going to portion it out. The recipe says that we're gonna get four dozen. Well, I've never gotten four dozen out of this. Let's see what I get. Of course, you can make them any size, but we like a little bigger cookie. Okay, we got three dozen. Now these go in the oven, it says for 15 minutes. We'll check them after 15 minutes, but halfway through, after eight minutes, I'm gonna flip them around and change the racks for them. So we'll check on them at 15 minutes and see how they're doing. A look at them, oh, they're nicely browned. Oh, beautiful. Okay, we're gonna pull them out and we're going to let them sit for five minutes on the cookie sheet. So now five minutes have passed and the cookies have set up enough that we can easily move them over to our cookie sheets. So we'll go ahead and do this and let them cool. 
So here we have it, our after meringue cookies. If you find yourself with extra egg yolks or you just want to eat these cookies, which is a good enough a reason, and you can modify these any way you want. You can put any mix-ins that you want. In our case, we got pecans, dates, and nuts. So let's give this a try. Mm. It's a great cookie. I hope you'll try them. And until next time, keep cooking.